Hello, everybody. So thank you for being here at this talk. I'm going to talk to you about uh, France Television and the way we are using API platform to build our content APIs. So uh, I would first try to tell you about the story that started in 2017, 2018, when there was a project to rebuild a part of France Info. So at the time, the team there uh, noticed that there were some issues with the current APIs. So they embarked in the project to they embarked in the project to make that better and uh, to build new APIs. So first thing first about me, my name is Georges King. So I'm a freelance IT consultant. I'm currently working at uh, France Television in a team that is called PIC, which uh, translates in Platform d'Information Commune. And I am a backend developer, and uh, I also like to do some DevOps things and, and such. So about France Television, so let's say first that There are two parts at France Television. There are, you have the broadcast parts, which are all the news channels. So the TV channels, France 2, France 3, 4, 5, and uh, France uh, 1, Outre-mer. And other channels like Oku, Lumni, and La Maison des Maternelles. These are the parts which are broadcasts. And also you have the part that deals with news articles, the so written news that you can find on the web with France Info, France 3 Régions, and La Première. And you also have some mobile apps for France TV Sport and also France 3 Régions. So those are the two parts that you can find at France Television. I'm going to talk about the parts on the right, about news articles. That's the part we are talking about today. So France Television. Does it work? Yes, right. So France Television, since we are talking about everything that's written news, you have France 3 Région. Those are the metrics that you can find. So approximately 800K articles for France 3 and France Info. Those are the biggest platforms. And then you have uh, Outre-mer that have uh, less lot articles. But in terms of traffic, historically, it's France Info that has the biggest traffic on the web. But you also have uh, France 3 Région, and uh, to a lesser extent, you have uh, Outre-mer. So that gives you a rough idea of uh, the, the metrics of the traffic on the web for, for those websites. So what were we trying to solve at the time? At the time the project was envisioned, we had only France Info in mind, and there were several issues. The first issue was that France Info needed rebuilding, but why? Because we had front and back coupling. What does it mean? It means that the code base for back office, that is the app that, uh, that is used by the journalist to write articles, was the same code base that was used by the front web to display the website France Info. So there's nothing wrong in it in per se, because you have uh, many platforms are WordPre as WordPress where you can we have the back office and the front office that use the same code base. But it started to show some issues because that we will see later. You have competing DB accesses. So that was, we could see it when we had great events like, um, the, like uh, the election nights because we had uh, the, same, the same path for accessing database in the same code base that were used by, from articles on the web and articles from the back office app used by the journalist. So that was started to be an issue. The technology started to be obsolete. We are in Angular GAs 1.3. I think now they are at Angular 4 or 5, something like that. So, <laughs> okay. And the Zen framework was version 1.4 or 2.4, something like that. So the technology st stack was also obsolete. 
And on top of that, we have also a monolithic platform. Okay, so for back and for front. That was the same as a front and back coupling. So given these issues, the solution that was envisioned, because at the time, it was, everybody was talking about software service-oriented architecture. So the solution that was envisioned was to make an API-oriented architecture. So how does it work? So this wasn't something that was uh, done on, on day one. There's a cellular architecture at France Television who worked on the project and they come up with this solution. So the solution was to separate the back office app, which is used by journalists and the contributors to what articles, to separate it and to create two APIs, basically. One API for back office and one API for front, for front the web part. So once this choice is made, we have to find how are we going to implement that choice? Because it's, we know we want two APIs, back and front but which technology are we going to put to try to do those API? So at France Television, there are two main stacks that were used at the time. So PHP as a runtime with Symfony as a framework, or Node.js and Coa, Coa.js, if some people know, um, that were used at the time at France Television. So that's why uh, the choice was to be made between those two, because when you are at in a great organization like France Television, you also have to account for the, um, the, the developers and the teams that you are in place. And the France Television already had teams, knowledge about PHP Symfony and Node.js Core. So the choice was to be made between those two. So between those two, the following step was to know which database stack were going to be used, knowing that, that one of the um, requirements was to use an ORM, the, an object relational mapper, and then an, an search index. So the, um, the idea was to do some proof of concepts of any combinations of those two, and to find out which ever was the best fit for, the, for what we're trying to do. So there you have an extract, an excerpt of what uh, the, the the proof of concepts was that were done. So first, we have Node and Elasticsearch as a database backend. You have cons and pros. So basically, with Node to summarize to sum it up, with Node we have good performance with the runtime, but. Uh, we had issues, particularly with Elasticsearch, because the team at France Television was not very uh, proficient with the way uh, to deal with re-indexing and scalability of an Elasticsearch stack. So that was an issue. But um, and also that was the same issue using Node and MongoDB. So we, lo and behold we find that the best compromise we could have was with Symfony and MariaDB because that was a very well-known platform. Uh, we could use a unified stack between front and back with Symfony and using the ORM. So the choice was made to go with the Symfony and MariaDB stack among all of us. And then something happened. While the team has set to go with the Symfony stack with a, an ORM and using MariaDB as a database backend, they went to a conference that is called Symfony Live, for those of you who know. And at that Symfony Live conference, there was a talk by someone named uh, <laughs> Kevin Douglas. <laughs> and he talked about REST or GraphQL, some illustrated examples with Symfony and API platform. And what was interesting was that the team at the time didn't know anything, nothing about API platform. So when Kevin asked the, the audience who knew API platform, approximately everybody in the room raised their hand and not people from France Television. So they were intrigued. So they tried to find out about API platform. 
So that's when the idea started because we wanted to do an API platform and there was a product called API platform that were using Symfony. Symfony that was already used at France Television. So the idea started in the team to, to they started with the idea that maybe we can do better than uh, uh, just with Symfony, maybe we can use API platform to help us implement that uh, correctly and better. So that's when uh, another issue or another story start because we have already stated that we want to rebuild France Info. We know that due to our proof of concept, we are using Symfony and MariaDB. We are already set with that. But now we found out about API platform. So back to France Television, we found out that other teams that we have said before, France 3 Région and Outre-mer La Première, they were also in a project of rebuilding their platforms. So keep in mind that each of these teams has a given a dedicated CMS. They are not using the same tool, the same apps. So at that time, all we're using were in the process of re rebuilding their platforms. So the idea was here, maybe if we are all rebuilding a new platform, maybe we should join our efforts and build something that will be shared among others. So that, that's the way toward a shared platform that will be used by France 3 Région Outre-mer. So at France Info, we had Zen Framework as a use a backend framework with AngularJS. At France Info at Romer, they had Drupal, the CMS Drupal. So the idea to join those forces was to introduce a new platform called PIC, the Platform d'Information Commune, who would be used for the web on all the products, Région Outre-mer and France Info, but who will also be used by the apps, so France TV apps, and later you see that we have also a region app. So that was the main idea. So once that idea is set up, we are have this, this idea of that we, have, we will have the same platform for all the trees. We have to make sure that some fundamentals are taken care of, especially do we have the same editorial concepts? When we talk about an article at France Info, does it have the same meaning when we are at François Région or when we are at Outre-mer La Première? So uh, Kevin was talking about some documents uh, uh, earlier with RDF. That's the same idea. You have to have the same definitions of concepts if you want to have a shared API. So we that needed to be taken care of. Also, we wanted to share a generic code base because if you don't have a generic code base, you are doing the same thing as before. You will have to maintain three code bases, which was not the, the idea. So second thing. And the third thing that was actually a choice, it's not a requirement per se, but it was a choice. Do we have a single platform, like you can have SaaS platform, where people can log in access that platform by the same URL, whether you are France Info, France 3, Outre-mer, you have the same URL, or are we going to have distinct URLs for those platforms? So the choice was made to have dedicated platforms. So each one will have its URL, but they will share the same code base. So the difference will be done in configuration. So that's the platform high-level overview of what I just said. So PIC would be something like this. So remember, first we have uh, API back and API front for the web. But now, since we all we'll also have web apps, we introduce a new API, which is called API mobile, which would use data from API front, and who, which will be specif specifically designed for mobile uh, clients. We also managed to create an SDK. So for those of you who are familiar with PHP, this was a, a composer library that will be used to help uh, the existing teams to upgrade 
to the new APIs. So they were, they were from Drupal, and those SDK would help them to migrate to the new uh, platform. So that's the high-level overview of the platform that was imagined. And the text tag looks like this. So you can see all the, um, the components that we saw earlier, the API front, API mob mobile, and API back. The specific, the specific thing here with the API back is that we have two databases. We have one database that is called Edito that will be used by the back office app, the back office app that is used by journalists. And you have another sh schema, another database that is called Publish that will be used by the API front. So this helps us to not have competing accesses to databases. And in Publish, you have the exact same schema. The only difference is that data that is in Publish is data that is ready to be published and to be shown on the front website. Also, they, we introduced some services here because we talked about the idea was to have a service-oriented architecture. So the main selling point here was the introduction of uh, an event bus. So all the communication inside different components will go through the event bus implemented with the RabbitMQ. So you have a component for indexing, you have a component for managing cache, a component for notifications, and also a component that is called Video Factory that makes the link with the broadcast part because the broadcast part, sometimes we will need to get some audio content, some video content to, make in, to put into articles. Right. So now I'm going to show you each part, each of those ap APIs and how we have implemented them using API platform. So first, the API front or front API, which is used by websites, the France Info, France 3 Région, Outre-mer La Première. So, as I said earlier, that's the general text schema. You have, oh, pff, sorry, sorry. So, okay, it, that's it. Yes, that's it. So, you have the API front, which is used by website. In front, you have a varnish backend for uh, caching. And then you have the API front implemented with API platform that uses only the publish MariaDB databases. And here's an example to illustrate the, how it works. You have here a page at uh, the website France Info Sport. This page, to construct this page, there's an API call that is made at the endpoint contents with a filter of taxonomy. So that's one endpoint, that's one filter, which is taxonomy, and you have a notion that is called groups that we will see. And here for the detail for one article, you have three contents that are important, that's not specific to France Television, I guess other websites that are produced contents do the same. You have three main important concepts. You have the content, the media, and the taxonomy. The content represents, obviously, the articles that we want to produce. It has a new URL. The media is also an entity, but that is linked to a content. It doesn't have a public URL in and of itself. And the taxonomy are some, we call it tags, are labels that you can put to describe a content. So those are the three main concepts that you can find in our APIs. And as we saw earlier, we have a collection when you call the endpoint contents, but you can also have the detail for one content here with the endpoint contents, different groups to garner some more data and we have the view here. So how do we do this with API platform? Remember, we were in a Symfony project. So in Symfony, which is a PHP framework, you will just use one class, PHP class, to represent our concept or entity. So 
we start with a simple PHP class here. So we saw earlier that we had content. So directv is a kind of content. You also have article, written article, which is a kind of content. So we have our PHP class. Then we add some attributes here, the attributes that maps with our ORM, which is doctrine. So those attributes help us with uh, the object relational mapping. Then we add some more attributes that are specific to API platform that help describe those, that simple PHP class is now a resource that is known by API platform. And that's about it. That's all. So only with those things, we are able to have uh, documents that will be served by our, our API. So here we have defined collection operations. We have item operations that we allow. Since we are in API front, we don't, we don't want the data to be modified. So only get operations are allowed in API front. Also for the resource payload, so that was for the endpoint, but for the resource payload, that's our PHP class. That's a regular PHP class with some getter, some getters. We add some attributes for the object relational mapping. And also we have some, we add some attributes for API platform to account for, um, to be able to retrieve all the data. So the interesting part here is the groups. This was custom made for France Television. It helped us to know which attributes we want to give back when there is, a, there is an API call. So the, now that was the API front. That's all we have for API front. So it's basically it's API, from, uh, API platform out of the box without no need to make any customization whatsoever. So that's about it. So API back is with this stack. So here that communicates with all the, the RabbitMQ bus and the CMS AngularJS app. For the API back, it's basically the same thing. We have our classes here, PHP classes, our API platform attributes here. And here we have the specific thing. We override the default groups that are used by API platform. So that when we have an article here, that's the same that we saw with API uh, front. We have annotations for ORM. We have validations. Those are common symphony concepts. We add here the group resource. And we also see we have here article default. So what's the concept here? This is custom at France Television. So we have three parts on our groups. The first is the resource type, a pipe, the method, and the group that we're going to use. So just by using those serial serialization group, we can choose which properties will be given back to the caller when calling the API. So for example, here, when we call an article, automatically we will generate all those groups and it will tell us to give back all the properties that map with those groups, the serialization groups. So this is done using a, a context builder. This is a API platform context concept. So to do that, we have, we implement the serializer context builder interface. Here, we create the context from the request. We build, we add the default group, and we build all the groups that we saw earlier. So when we have called uh, an API, you will know that automatically, just by implementing that class, we'll have all the serialization group that you saw earlier. So that enables us, sorry, that, that enables us to choose just by using the serialization group that enables us to choose which properties we will give back 
depending on the HTTP method used or other serialization group that are given as arguments. So the API back, an interesting fact also is the RabbitMQ bus. So the interesting part here, this is not specifically API platform. The interesting part here is that we can use Symfony event. Here it is a, a lifecycle doctrine events. So API platform allows us to use some events that are already built in in Symfony. So by using API platform, you are not op you, you are not forced to use something that is foreign when you are already using Symfony. So you have entity listener here, and uh, on the lifecycle events here, for example, on post persist, we have we we are logging the fact that the entity has been updated, and you are indexing the entity and we registering for cache invalidation. So we do this post persist on the schema edito. We do the same on the schema publish when the entity is published. So the next API, the third API actually, is API mobile. As we saw, the API mobile is used by mobile apps. That's a uh, API platform API. That's the documentation that you can find at the URL for the mobile API. It's fairly simple. Only two endpoints, content and taxonomy. Nothing more. But to build the API mobile, we use the API front. So that's an API that's calling another API. So that's something that is, you can be done with API platform out of the box too. So we use some concepts that are provided already by API platform, though some concepts are, have already changed in API platform 3. We are using API platform 2.7. So here we implement two interfaces, serializer way data provider interface and restricted data provider interface. We implement the method from the interface supports. So this provider will support only the content entities. And here, when this provider is called, we tell, tell him to use the service API front and to get the data from this content. And then to deserialize, to, to deserialize this content for API mobile. And specifically for API mobile, the reason we did that is that, as some of you might know, for mobile, we have specific requirements because you have low bandwidth and you don't want to have several or multiple HTTP calls. So you have to group every data. That's why we did this. Sometimes it's called the uh, backend for frontend, if someone uh, recall. So for that, we, too, we use the data transformer with data transformer in interface. We have to implement that method, so post transformation which says that when it's an article and we are not in digest transformation, just we can call, we can use this transformer. And then in the transform method, we use the custom, the out of the box transformer. And then here we will modify the data that is incoming and format it in the way that we are expecting for our mobile. So this is entirely custom, but it is allowed by API platform to add your custom logic here and still be in an API. So I still, I think I still have uh, two, two minutes to talk about <laughs> HTTP cache. So HTTP cache, um, we use uh, Varnish as a backend for HTTP cache. How HTTP cache works, so we use uh, the module Varnish cache plus with uh, the X keys module. That allows us to use an invalidation that is tag based instead of only using the URL of the, 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 the entities. So how does it work? When via API back you put an article, so you mutate an article, there's an event that is sent in the RabbitMQ. The cache manager knows about it and due to the fact that he knows the X keys, he can inform Varnish that an article has been modified and send him the X key, and all the documents that depends on that X key will be invalidated. So how does it work? The website asks for content, varnish 
if Vanish doesn't have the data, it asks to API front. API front respond with the content and the X keys. The X keys, the Varnish lookup for the X keys, and then Varnish, Varnish stores the data and Varnish respond to the website so that the next call doesn't go to the, the, the API. So that's how we implement the caching layer. Uh, this is an important part because when we talk about APIs, uh, an advantage of using HTTP APIs and sharing a common platform was to have a unified caching strategy. So when an API is called with a single URL, whether it be from API mobile or from the web, you can have a single entry in the Varnish cache. So the invalidation is way easier. We don't have to worry about who is the caller, if it's the web or mobile. So that's uh, the, the, the schema of how, how, how it works, the, the collection of uh, X keys, but I'm, I'm out of time, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to hurry up. So, uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Still. Um, what about the future? So about the future, uh, we want to upgrade our stacks to be more standards and compliant compared to RFCs and standards. And we also might upgrade the Symfony framework. We are actually using 5.4, so we'll migrate to 6.x, 6.2 at the time. API platform 2, we are using 2.7, so we'll migrate to 3x. And we also want to do some enhancements, so maybe use Elasticsearch as backend for some collection endpoints that garner too much data when calling the API, and also auto-generate API front from uh, API back resource metadata. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to share with you. Overall, the message is that uh, whatever the context, the situation, you can use your project and migrate it to API platform uh, using the concept of API platform. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know.